So it, it's very rare you get a chance to introduce someone and the words living legend come to mind and you have to think and pause and say, does that really live up to uh, the caliber of what we're dealing with here? And that's kind of the situation I'm in right now. Um, I, we don't, physically don't even have time to go through all that Mr. Player has accomplished on the golf course throughout his career, but I'll give you a few highlights. Uh, he's won 18 major tournaments over the course of his career, a list that includes three masters, three open championships, each of which were won in different decades, a uh, feat that has never been accomplished in modern era since old time Morris. Um, he got off to a pretty quick start by the age of 29, became just the third man ever to win the Grand Slam. Only Jack Nicklaus and Tiger Woods have followed since then. His longevity, aided definitely by his uh, dedication to health and fitness, was also incredible. He won his last Masters at the age of 42, and then continued his incredible career on the uh, Senior Tour, where he won another nine majors, so that was for an 18 total. Uh, one final highlight of the golf course, my personal favorite, as you will see with my own eyes, was uh, prior to last year's Masters, as he was an honorary starter for the first time, he stood on the first tee alongside his fellow members of the big three and smashed a drive down the uh, first fairway farther than the other two. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the other competitor inside of him was uh, quite thrilled with that. So he's a champion in every sense of the word. Um, can't say more about him. We're so thrilled you're here with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Player. Callaway, two million dollars, and to Taylor a million dollars, to everybody in this room who've played a role in this wonderful facility, to contribute to the youth. My all-time hero was Winston Churchill. When you think what that man did in the times of war, it's quite unbelievable if you ever follow his story or read any of his books. And he said, the youth of a nation are the trustees of posterity. And this is what we've got to do, particularly when you live and you're fortunate to Every day you wake up in the morning, you should kiss the ground if you live in America. Because I've traveled more miles than any human being that's ever lived. And things are like this. No, that's, that's not a joke. It's, it's quite sad because I'd like to spend a lot more time at home. But the things that these two eyes have seen in my life, and to realize what you have in this country, and to take advantage of it, and I must just say to the Colonel who's sitting in this room here today, how much I admire what your military has done, and to give the people this opportunity to have the freedom is something that I appreciate very much indeed. And this is, America is the last bastion, really, of the free enterprise system. And um, I hope it maintains its place in the world in such an important position. So it's such a pleasure to be here today, Tim, because these young people of all different nationalities are given an opportunity. And what more do you want in their life? Because so many places in the world, people don't have an opportunity. And to have an opportunity to be involved in a game that has such incredible longevity. I won a tournament when I was 63 years of age. Well, everybody else in other sports are retiring when they're 30, if you're lucky. And when they retire, they can hardly walk. Boxers are so punch drunk that they're sitting with their family and the front doorbell goes and he wants to knock, hang out in his wife. You know, they use that bell. So golf is a very unique sport <clears throat> besides longevity. I tell all young people, play golf. It'll help you in your life. It's a passport to the world. The people that you will be working with one day when you go into the world of, uh, of trying to earn a living, most of those people are playing golf. And if you can play well, if you can play well and you can conduct yourself, it's a great help and an advantage of getting a job. Because we want to, public relations in all companies are important. If I think today at 77 years of age, the companies that I'm representing doing golf outings and promoting their particular products and companies, it doesn't exist in any other sport. And uh, if we can just get 
And one of the things of my favorite subjects now that I don't play the tour full time is to get through to the youth of the world and mainly to America because I have 14 American grandchildren. And that is to look after their bodies. Your body is a holy temple. And to get people today to exercise and to watch what they eat, it is easier to get a camel through the eye of a needle. <laughs> people do not worry about health. They talk about it, but they don't do anything about it. They don't exercise and they eat anything that is available. And this is what we've got to try and do, is to get this great country with 30% of the young people in this country are obese. Think about that, 30%, and increasing like a tsunami. Surely we've got to take pride in this great country. Surely the parents have got to stop the kids from them being obese. Surely we've got to get them doing more exercise. Surely we've got to watch what they eat. A, a nation that is fit is a productive nation. And honestly, when I see, we went up to uh, Capitol Hill uh, on behalf of Callaway the last two years and appealed to the senators and to congressmen to increase exercise in schools. It was a waste of time. It was a waste of time. They were worried about the constituencies of losing votes or they're taking money out. And recently, the recent figures they have withdrawn $3.5 billion from school exercise. One gentleman told me today, there are not many schools around here that even have physical fitness in schools anymore. And what, does, what it means, when you, when you withdraw $3.5 billion from an exercise program from schools, 16 million young people are affected. More crime, more drugs, and more children having babies under age. So what we've got to do, we've got to, as parents, People like yourselves, and people like Procreate and uh, kids at First Team have got to get the system going. We've all got an obligation to get people to start working and being proud of their country and to get this damn word entitlement out of the dictionary. <laughs> Nobody's entitled to a damn thing. You've got to earn it. And so let's go on. <laughs>